Hey there, Codelings! Welcome back to Codeverse TV. If you're joining us for the very first time, my name is Katie and I'm your host. Our show is all about coding and building cool video games, so if you like those things, awesome, you've come to the right place. And if you don't, well, go away. Just kidding, stay a while. During today's show, I am going to play a game that is featured on the Codeverse App Store. If you've never been to our App Store before, it is incredible. Every single mobile app and game featured on there was built by people like you. And you can play and share those games with your friends and family. Why don't we go ahead and play a game now? Take me to my appy place. Okay, we are inside the Codeverse App Store and I am going to pick a game on here that I have never played before. Let's do this. What do we want to play today? Mm, get to the castle, block escape, uh, pop a shot. How about this one? Heart versus Sword by Lila. Let's see. Heart versus Sword. Use the directional pad to move the heart to avoid the falling sword, but don't hit the walls. Okay, let's do this. Ah! Oh, I died already. Game over. Let's try again. So I've got to dodge the swords, basically, with this heart that I have, and I'm using the directional pad to do it. Ah! Nine points. Let's see if I can beat nine points. Yee! Lila, this is challenging! The swords move so quickly. This is phenomenal. Ah! Six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. Yes, eleven. Ah! <laughs> this is great and it already has 25 plays. Well done, Lila. Everyone should go check this out. It's on the Codeverse app store and it's called Heart vs. Sword. And if you have a game of your own that you would like to submit to the App Store, all you need to do is tell your parents to email us at tv at codeverse.com. Okay, are you ready to code? Let's head on over to Mission Control. This is Mission Control, which is my absolute favorite part of the show. When you become a member of Codeverse, you receive these special missions, which are guided coding activities that range in difficulty level from beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, and pro. I'm gonna pick a mission card at random and we're going to learn how to build it together using real code. I've gone ahead and picked an intermediate mission called Egg Hunt. The goal of the game is to help a rabbit find his hidden eggs. Sounds excellent. Once we've successfully completed this mission, we will have learned about the following coding concepts. Colors, positioning, methods, and events. First things first, I'll log into my Codeverse account and select new project. Now we need to tell the computer exactly what we need to build this game. So for egg hunt, we need a circle, we need a large platform, a plant, and a rabbit. Cool, now that we've imported these classes, we can move on to step two. Let's add the rabbit and the large platform into our game using a var statement. Var stands for variable. Var large platform equals new large platform 50, 80. Now let's change the body color of our large platform. To do this, we'll use a method. Type in large platform dot set body color. And you'll see that there's three options here, red, green, and blue, which are our RGB colors. So if we wanted to make the large platform a blue color, a bright blue color, we would change red to zero, green to zero, and blue to 100. Or if we wanted to make the large platform purple, we know that red and blue creates the color purple. So you could say 80 under red, zero under green, and then 80 under blue. But for this game, let's make the body color light brown. Type in for red, 94, for green, 91, and for blue, 68. Now let's make the large platform bigger using another method. Large platform dot set size, 700. Now let's add our rabbit into the game. Var rabbit equals new rabbit, 1555. 
We'll also make it so that the rabbit doesn't fall off the screen due to gravity. Type in rabbit.setfixed and make it true. Now we'll make it so that the rabbit can overlap with other objects, like the large platform, for example. To do this, type in rabbit.setphysics false. And finally, let's make our rabbit draggable, meaning that when we run our game, we can use our finger or our mouse to be able to drag the rabbit across the screen. Rabbit.setdraggable true. Cool, step three, let's create some eggs. We'll create three circles using var statements and then we'll use methods to make those circles egg-shaped. var circle equals new circle 80, 93. Now let's change the width and the height of this circle. Circle.set width 50, dot set height 60. var circle 2 equals new circle 86, 65. Circle 2 dot set width 50, dot set height 60. And the third egg, var circle 3 equals new circle 2587. Circle 3 dot set width 50, dot set height 60. Remember, we have to create variables with different names so that we know which circle is which or which egg is which. Step four, let's change the color of our eggs. It is springtime after all, and I am living for pastel colors. So we'll use methods to set the color of the eggs to pink, blue, and yellow. Circle dot set body color, 92, 72, 94. Circle two dot set body color, 47, 82, 98. Circle three dot set body color, 94, 91, 68. Step five, let's make the rabbit collect the eggs. We'll use a when statement to be able to do this. A when statement allows you to run a specific piece of code when an event happens. In this game, the event we're going to listen to is when the rabbit collects or collides with the eggs. So when rabbit.collides with circle, everything inside this block of code will run. Now type in these methods circle.move to x, 10, 1, and circle.move to y, 10, 1. The first number here is the coordinate that the egg will move to, and the second is how long it's gonna take to get there. Now we need to do the exact same thing for circle two and circle three, which are eggs two and three. When rabbit.collides with circle two, for move to x, change 10 to 20, but we'll keep y at the same. When rabbit.collides with circle three, let's change the x to 30 and keep the y the same. And finally, step six, let's hide our eggs in some plants. We'll use var statements to create three plants in our game. Var plant equals new plant, 8276. Var plant two equals new plant, 4667. Var plant three equals new plant, 2080. Now let's set the size of all of these plants using a method. Plant.setSize, 350. Plant 2 dot set size 200 and plant 3 dot set size 200 and plant 3 dot set size 300. Mission complete. Now let's smash that run button and drag our rabbit into the plants where he will collect his eggs. Cool, how about we customize this game even more? Let's add a points tracker so that every time the rabbit collects the eggs, we get points. We'll use a label and a var statement to do this. So first things first, let's import our label and then we'll create a label using our var statement. Var label equals new label 50, 10. Underneath that, type var points equals zero. Now scroll to the when statements that we created earlier. Here's where we want to add our points. So points equals points plus one label.setText, points. So what this means is, every time the rabbit collects an egg, whether it's circle one, circle two, or circle three, the rabbit will get points. Hit run and see what happens. 
Cool. Now let's make the rabbit eat the plants. When rabbit dot collides with plant, rabbit dot explode. Now if we wanted the rabbit to eat all of the plants, we'd have to create when statements for plant two and plant three. But let's just do it for this first plant. Hit run. Let's do one more customization. How about we say that when the rabbit is tapped, the rabbit jumps for joy. When rabbit dot tapped, rabbit dot jump. Hit run. Pretty fun, eh? You can see that there's lots of different ways that you can customize your game to make it your own. All right, let's move along from mission control and let's head on over to the mail room where I answer any coding related question that you have. We're in the mail room and today's question is from Ray. Ray asks, how can I make objects float randomly from the bottom of my screen to the top of my screen? Amazing question, Ray. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Here's a fish tank that I created earlier. Let's just say that I wanted bubbles to float randomly from the bottom of the screen up to the surface. And I want those bubbles to appear at different locations across the bottom every half second. We're going to use random and timers to be able to do this. You can see that the first thing I did was I went ahead and imported random and timer to get started. Let's go ahead and create a timer using a var statement so that when I hit run, bubbles will randomly appear at the bottom of the screen. var timer equals new timer and then timer dot count to and we'll set it to zero so that the second I hit run, those bubbles will appear immediately at the bottom of the screen. Now type when timer dot ends. When the timer ends, I'm going to create a random number variable for my X position, which is my left to right direction. And then use that in my var statement to create a new bubble. So var X equals random dot number. And I'm gonna pick a number between zero here and a hundred so that bubbles will show up anywhere across the bottom of my screen. And so now my ball or my bubble can be created at this X position and I'm gonna put 110 here so that the bubbles are starting below my screen. And finally, I want the bubbles to move up the screen so I would type ball.move up. Hit run you'll see that there's one bubble floating up the screen to the surface. But if you notice, the bubbles don't disappear when they get to the surface. Let's make them disappear. So right below ball.moveUp, type this, ball.delay7.hide. But we want to create multiple bubbles, right? We'll have to use a timer to be able to do this. So type in right here, timer count to 0.5, which is every half second. Hit run. You'll see now that there's tons of bubbles being generated randomly at the bottom of the screen and they're making their way up to the surface. One more thing. Let's just say I wanted to make these bubbles different sizes. Here's how we do that. Right below where it says ball.moveUp, type in ball.setSize and in the parentheses type size you'll see that it gives me an error because we have to create the size of the different bubbles, which we'll do right above that line of code. So type in var size equals random dot number, and let's make the bubbles between the sizes of 20 and 60. Now hit run, and there you have it. You'll see that your bubbles, which are randomly appearing at the bottom of your fish tank or your screen, are now all different sizes. Great question, Ray. I absolutely loved it. And if you have a question of your own, all you need to do is tell your parents to email me at tv at codefirst.com. Okay, well, that's all we've got time for today. Join me next time for some more mind-blowingly awesome coding adventures. Bye.